this is the basis for all uh, card manipulation. Um, it is probably the most important thing that you are going to learn. Uh, the way the back palm works, what you just saw was a vanish and reproduction of a single card. Uh, the way this works is we're going to take the card and we're going to place it into uh, a position known as back palm. Back palm is where you're palming the card on the back of your hand. As you can see here, it's on the back of my hand. Now what we'll do is we're going to um, put the card in that position in front of the audience and it will look like the card disappears. The way you do that is you take the card, place it between your thumb and two middle fingers. Uh, the two outside fingers, your pinky and your first finger are going to be loose. Um, you're going to bend your fingers in like this, your two middle fingers, in so that the nails are touching the back of the card. Once you do that, you're going to take your two outside fingers, the pinky and the first finger, and push them against your uh, two middle fingers, creating sort of like a, a bent a card that's like bent in half down the middle, and you're going to straighten all your fingers out. That done in a quick motion um, looks like this. Now, uh, when you watched the video, you'd notice that I made like a snapping noise when I was putting the card into back palm. Uh, the way I did this is I actually pushed the card in the middle so that it's kind of bowing outwards. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like, um, if you can see how that looks. Uh, it's kind of bowed outwards so that when I put my fingers together and push down, it will create a snapping noise. Uh, the reproduction is basically the reverse of what you've already done. You've put the card into back palm. Now you're going to reverse that. You curl your fingers in. You put your thumb on the face of the card and you push your fingers out. That reproduces the card. So when you do it quickly, it's a vanish and a reproduction. That's the back palm of a single card. Uh, first, I showed you how to vanish and reproduce a card. Now I'm going to show you how to vanish, show the back of your hand, the front of your hand, and reproduce the card. The way this works is using the back to front palm. Uh, the way you do that is you put the card into back palm. Uh, then to move the card from back palm to the front palm, uh, you are going to tilt your fingers down. Now once you've tilted your fingers down, you're going to twist your whole arm to show the back of your hand and as you do that you curl your fingers in like this. So fingers down, the back of your hand, curl the fingers in. That forces the card to be facing away from your audience. Then you extend your fingers and push the card into front palm. Front palm is basically uh, back palm but on the front of your hand. So you're the card is still between uh, the pinky and the first finger. Now to turn the hand back over, you do the reverse. You push your hand this way so that the fingers are face the hand is facing towards the back of the audience. Make that fist. Then turn your fingers down and straighten your hand back out and the card will be in back palm and then you reproduce the card. That's the front to back palm. This is an exposed view of the front to back palm. Card goes into back palm, fingers go down, you make the fist so the card is facing away from the audience and the back of your hand is facing the audience. You straighten your hand back out to show the back of your hand and then you do the whole thing in reverse, back this way, fingers facing down and your empty hand and the production. Now you've learned how to vanish and reproduce a card. You've learned to vanish, show the back of your hand and the front of the hand and reproduce a card. Now it's time to learn how to vanish multiple cards. The way this is done is you start with um, four or five cards. You're going to take the first card and you're going to vanish it into back palm. The next one, uh, what you're going to do, uh, this is the tricky part, 
you're going to actually be producing one of the cards, aligning it with the other one, and then back palming those. So you back palm them both. You align them with your pinky and your first finger, and then you straighten your hand back out, and the card moves into back palm. The third card, same exact thing, and the fourth card, same exact thing. That's back palming multiple cards. single productions, uh, producing en seemingly endless streams of cards at your fingertips. Um, the classic that everybody's probably seen, the way this works, um, you're going to get a stack of cards, uh, maybe five to start with, and you're going to put them into back palm. I have multiple cards back palmed here already. What you're going to do is um, you're going to reach up with your thumb and grab the top pip of a card right here. Do you see that? Now, uh, the idea is you're going to pull one card out, maintaining pressure on that top part of the card with your thumb. You pull the card to clear your finger, your uh, first finger, and then you replace your first finger real fast so that the cards don't spring out. Um, this is what it looks like when the cards spring out. And you'll get this a lot when you're starting uh, because it's a very, very difficult move to master. Uh, you take your thumb, place it on the six of uh, on the top card, pull it free of the pinky, and then this is what's going to happen, something like that. Now you'll get used to it after a while because it's a very weird move to do. Cards in back palm, you start with your thumb, Pull the thumb forward so that it releases from the pinky, clears with the finger, and uh, you replace the finger before the cards can spring out again. Um, that's how you produce one card, and you're just going to repeat that move over and over again, and it appears as though you're producing multiple cards at your fingertips. Um, another thing that I want to stress uh, is to make sure that you reach forward with your thumb as opposed to pulling in with your fingers. That's a mistake that I see a lot of manipulators make. Um, what's going to happen is uh, if you do that, you're going to expose where all the cards are coming from if you pull in with your fingers. Uh, so again, go forward with the thumb, grab hold of the top card, and pull it through. Pull Reach forward with your thumb and don't ever tuck in with your fingers and do that because you're exposing the secret and it doesn't look so hot. That's the back palming of multiple cards. Okay, here's a close up of what's going on. Um, notice when the production starts, I reach forward with my thumb and produce the card and you pull it down in front. The next one, you reach up, pull it down. And the nice thing about this also is when you pull the card down, it covers the edges of the other cards so that you can hold this here for a while um, and nobody will see those edges. Once you let go of it, you've got to produce another card to cover those edges that are sticking through your fingers again. Again. talk about types of cards uh, that you can use for manipulation. Uh, the type of cards that I'm using uh, in this video are steamboats. Uh, you can get them uh, at a lot of different places. Uh, they're a nice card and the reason I like using them is because the back design is all one pattern and there's no borders on the cards. Uh, the problem with bordered cards is when you put the cards in back palm, instead of seeing uh, something that blends in kind of with your hand, there's this blazing white border. So that's the problem with using bordered cards. So if you get a card that's non-bordered, bees work very well, um, and any other type of card that doesn't have a real border on it and is red 
will really work well for you. Um, another type of card that you can get if you get really into manipulation and uh, you maybe want to do this like in a show or something like that, uh, there's a manipulation type of card. It's a third thinner than a normal deck of cards. Uh, that means the stock is a third thinner. It makes them uh, more pliable and a better card to use. Uh, they're also flesh toned on the back so that when you have the cards in back palm they blend in very well with your skin. Um, those are a great type of card to use. Uh, another, um, like if you, can, if you can find a card that has a thin stock, um, it's very good to get those um, because it'll make it easier when you're back palming multiple cards to have a thinner card. Uh, that way you can back palm a lot higher number of cards with the same amount of um, like stress on your hands. Another type of card uh, that you can also get is a Japanese card that is this exact same back design but it's also a third thinner than a normal deck of cards. Uh, they're called Magician's Card. Uh, so if you can find those, those are another good type of deck to use. Um, so this is, uh, again, these are steamboats. So if you guys get a chance to go out and get a deck of steamboats, I would highly suggest it. Um, and it takes some work getting uh, the deck pliable enough to do manipulation with, but once you uh, put the work in, and again, that's just working with the cards uh, and back palming them and that sort of thing, for a couple weeks you'll get them to where they're really, really nice and uh, really, really uh, supple and good for manipulation. So, there you go.